So in a lecture about justice and health, it feels remiss to not address social justice. So that's what we'll be talking about in this next section. So it feels a little silly to define social injustice because it feels like something you, you see, know it when you see it. But so we're all on the same page. Social injustice is when specific populations or groups have their economic, sociocultural, political, civil, or human rights denied or violated based on the perception of essentially their inferiority by those who are have more power or influence. And related is policies or actions that adversely affect the social conditions in which people can be healthy, particularly in this context of injustice and health. There's a particular theory of justice called social justice theory that essentially attends to the question, in a world of inequalities, which ones matter most? So Ruth Faden and Mar Madison Powers developed this theory, which is based on uh, a concept of well-being. And if it sounds a little bit familiar, it's related to the capabilities and opportunities uh, themes of justice that we talked about earlier. Well-being involves multiple dimensions, each of which represents something of independent moral significance. We'll talk about what those are in a minute. Essential dimensions of well-being are those things which are pretty characteristically present in any decent life, no matter what a person's particular life plan may be. Social justice is concerned with those essential dimensions of well-being because they matter to everyone. So what are the essential dimensions of well-being? Health, obviously, because that's what we're talking about today. But also personal security, the ability to go through life without having things, scary things or bad things happen to you. The ability to reason, the respect of other people and self-respect, the ability to form attachments with other people. And finally, the ability to determine your own life course, that it is not determined for you, that you need to have sort of a baseline level of each of these in order to be uh, a free and successful individual. So social justice theory says that it has two main jobs, the first of which is to identify when things go wrong. We talk a lot these days about vulnerable populations, but I like the language they use about people who are experiencing patterns of systematic disadvantage. What do we mean by that? Well, say we have a group of refugees who come to the United States, maybe as young adults. They likely experience challenges in getting education, in getting jobs. They might get uh, discriminated against based on the color of their skin or their relative comfort with English. They, that in turn will impact their ability to get health care and uh, be in sufficient health to hold jobs over the course of their lifetimes, maybe how long they live. So those dis sources of disadvantage sort of pile up not only in an individual person or in a po population, but also over time. So the children of refugees can be relatively disadvantaged as opposed to peers who didn't experience that background. The second job of justice is to help people get a sufficiency of each of the essential dimensions of well-being insofar as that's possible. So not only do your, you as physicians ask about people's health, but in the model of care where you're thinking about the social determinants of health, you are thinking about asking people, do you feel safe at, in, in your house? Do you have enough food? Do you have a roof over your head? Do you have... Um, Concerns about your neighborhood that you live in. Can you get to these appointments well enough? 
physicians hold a privileged position in society where they, where you can speak out, and we hope you do speak out over time, where you see unfair situations that could be remedied. For those of you who have been following along in on the slides and want to know where the artwork came from, I just wanted you to know that it's from my family, mostly from my grandmother, Pearl Hardaway Reese, but there were also some artwork by my mother, Nancy Scott Hardaway, and my brother, this owl, uh, by Trevor William Harrison.